at the start of the Iraq war in 2003. The main threats facing coalition troops were conventional weapons and chemical and biological threats. In Afghanistan, however, since the invasion following the attacks on the World Trade Center in 2001, suicide attacks had been occurring. This phenomenon soon moved to Iraq following the Bush administration's decision to disband the Iraqi army, a decision taken against the advice of top generals, which led to the rise of the insurgency. The first IEDs deployed in Iraq by former regime and Al-Qaeda elements were artillery shells or landmines rigged to command wire line of sight detonators. These devices would be hidden amongst roadside rubbish heaps, in oil drums or discarded fridges, even in dead animals and dead humans. Also secondary devices and daisy chain IEDs began to be deployed. Vehicle borne IEDs became commonplace. White pickups loaded up with ordnance and rigged to blow were the number one threat in 03, 04. Sometimes these bombs on wheels were driven by willing jihadi martyrs, other times by unwilling proxies. Coalition checkpoints, camp gates, patrols and convoys were all targets. Traditional timer-initiated IEDs had also been used in Iraq, but due to their set-it-and-forget-it nature, these were quickly superseded by mobile phone remote-controlled RC IEDs. An IED concealed alongside a nearby ground marker allowed the bomber to retreat and watch from a safe distance, waiting for a target before melting away incognito. In response to remotely initiated IEDs, coalition forces developed electronic countermeasures, vehicle mounted on man packed jamming systems, emitting a safety bubble through which patrols were able to move and greatly reduce the enemy's advantage. By 2005 it became clear a devastating leap forward had been achieved in IED technology. Supplied to Shia militias by the Iranian Al-Quds force, explosively formed projectiles or EFPs became the IED of choice in Iraq. EFPs were manufactured to factory shop production levels, a shaped projectile or copper slug, superheated by the explosive charge, formed a liquid bolt capable of slicing through coalition armour with deadly results. EFP IEDs varied in size from a coffee can to an oil barrel and featured yet another evolution, victim-operated passive infrared initiators. PIR EFPs were further disguised as artificial rocks using foam and camouflage, difficult to spot amongst the indigenous flora. Over in Afghanistan from 05, things began to hot up as Task Force Hellman probed the Taliban's backyard. The number of IED strikes skyrocketed. 2007 saw a 400% IED strike increase on the previous year, becoming the number one cause of death amongst NATO troops. 
Vehicles were upgraded to provide better blast protection. According to the Afghanistan Conflict Monitor, IEDs totaled more than 1,300 in July 2010 alone, causing 53 deaths. The preferred initiator in Afghanistan was the pressure plate. Cheap but effective pressure plate initiators consisted simply of a piece of rubber or thin wood separating a firing circuit, which when stood on, detonated a device. In Iraq, explosive ordnance teams blew in place or made safe hundreds of IEDs. In Afghan, that number rose to thousands. Robots were available to EOD teams, but often it would happen that a man in a suit was the best option. In Iraq and Afghan, dog handling teams were highly regarded for the bomb detecting ability of the dog's nose. A further tactical development in Afghanistan was the use of metal detectors amongst patrols. Due to the terrain in Helmand province, more time was spent patrolling by foot, and so the use of metal detectors, a process known as barmering, became an iconic characteristic of the conflict there. The latest evolution in Afghanistan is the low metal content IED using a modified battery IEDs in plastic containers are fitted with anti-handling devices, rigged to blow if disturbed. As of 2018, there were 3,459 coalition deaths in Afghanistan and nearly 5,000 in Iraq, 60% of which were attributed to IEDs. In both theatres, there have been over 50,000 wounded coalition soldiers and thousands of amputees.